All right. Okay, here, let me see if I can turn this thing around here. Okay, so members and friends, this is a shout out to the United States of America. Welcome to Surrey, Canada, British Columbia. This is... My name is Jason. Known Jason. Known as, known as, also known as Voodoo on the street. Voodoo? Yeah. Also known as Voodoo on the streets, Jason. The camera's a little far here, so we're going to have to kind of throw our voice so it can pick up on it, right? Um, this camp, uh, this is this is for the, the individual that um, made a comment to me today uh, on, on uh, one of my comments on the White House channel in regards to the spread of... Uh, Ebola within the um, you know impoverished group of the population when it comes to homeless and you know mentally ill drug addiction whatever uh, you know just no money no 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 welfare benefits you know food cut off of food stamps I mean could be a various number of things right you've got people in the United States that have absolutely zero issues other than you know they can't get jobs you know their houses are foreclosing and so the point is, is the healthcare system all across North America has been suffering a crisis, and now with the Ebola virus coming in, um, I'm just wondering if the people out here in my community are um, aware of one that the issue is starting to come in via through the airplanes. Uh, well, government, maybe in the United States, is taking a little more aggressive um, approach to stopping the spread. But have you heard anything about um, this? crises that's developing worldwide in Spain and the United States and you know places like that where you know you could possibly be at a higher risk to come into contact with potentially a very dangerous and deadly disease because there's very few services available for people living on the cusp of uh, society. Yeah and those services are limited and uh, they're, they're, they have their directives. They have, to, they have, have to holler. Those services are limited and they have directives, they have ulterior motives and anyway, uh, no, I haven't heard much. So he has heard not much other than what people are talking about in the community. Oh yeah. If they no come problem. across it. Um. How's the healthcare system for you right now? Right now, in the here and now. How is it for you in the here and now? I don't need any assistance from the government. I can monitor my own health. I think uh, they're healthcare system is corrupt and evil. Medical industry are two words that don't belong together. Industry by nature is self-sustaining. Healing is not. Okay, but when you're put in a position where you have to camp out on a piece of property because there's nowhere else to go, and it's easier to stay put at this point, because this is what you told me, right? It's easier to stay put and fight and refuse to leave because there's really nowhere else to go, right? Yeah. Doesn't that affect your health, the stress? The, the living conditions, the coldness, the dampness, you know, the lack of, um, you know, consistent food in terms of like a cup of soup and, you know, a nice chicken yeah, it affects pot pie. Yeah, keeps me strong and young. I'm 40 years old. Okay. I'm the youngest 40 year old I ever met. I like living like this. People slave all week so they can go out to the lake on the weekend and pitch a tent and camp. I live camping. Okay. All right, but. You see what I wrote on the wall up there? In wildness is the preservation of the world, Henry David Thoreau. Okay, but what about for these other people? Like, there's there's people there, people I there, can't, I can't people eat. over there. I mean, there's one, two, three, four. Is this the most amount of uh, tents that's been in this location since this started? How long has this been going on no, over the here? the most amount of tents has been in this location is ten. So at one moment in time, you had ten tents. Yep. So what happened to the other six? Um, they moved on or got kicked out or. Here's my Amerix hat. Forgot about that. Found something better. So who kicked them out? The police come by at seven o'clock every morning and hassle us. So the police come by here every morning at seven o'clock in the morning and they manage they to get leave the garbage and throw out our personal effects. So what do you mean they leave the garbage? They leave garbage. You know, there's garbage strewn all over the place. They just ignore it. They target our stuff. Okay. I'm gonna see. Hey, buddy. Buddy. Sir. You with the boots. Can you videotape this so you can, we can come closer and I can make sure that we can hear what we're saying on the camera when I upload? Huh? Okay, I'm just afraid the camera's not picking up our voices. That's all. Because it's kind of far. Mm -hmm. Right? But, um... 
Yeah, but you're gonna kick out our face. Okay, you you stay there. I'm gonna see if I can move it closer. Okay. Okay. Is there a lighter? I don't. Hold on. I'll just turn it off. Okay. Record yeah, on there. It's starting. Okay, so we're good to go. So now we got Paul holding the camera. So he's gonna be zooming in and out and Hi, you know Paul. get involved yeah. with the conversation. I've invited him to invite him, you know, to 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 join the conversation if he wants. Don't step too far back though. Yeah. Because you know, then you gotta holler, right? Andy. And this fella here's got a very low voice, so so it's you know, the closer you can get, you know, in and out. So anyway, what we're talking about here is is the uh, spread of the potential um, you know virus called Ebola. And you know, first of all, I, I I'm just kind of for me in the United States, they're bringing out SWAT teams. Okay, they're literally they're bringing out SWAT teams so that if somebody comes down with a symptoms and you know he's been in or she's been in contact with somebody from you know West Africa and then the SWAT team's gonna come in through the CDC or whatever it is and they're gonna round up this person and put them in isolation but the thing is the healthcare system as a whole throughout all their hospitals are not prepared for such a pandemic right and uh, my concern is well at this point you know it's the healthcare workers that are coming in two of them in the last week have come into contact with Ebola right from somebody that flew in from West Africa. He went in and out of the health, you know, hospital two times, and the second time he came back in, it was finally confirmed that he had, had Ebola, and he since died. And the, con the two nurses that came into contact with him in that short period of time while he was in the hospital at the second point, they've, they've contracted the uh, Ebola um, virus. Now, prior to this fellow being uh, moved to the hospital, he was transported in an ambulance and the second time he was transported in the ambulance was when he was really sick and they had transported a homeless person prior to or after. So you got the sick guy come in and then they transported a homeless person who has since been released. So, you know, Obama is trying to stop the spread but they're not closing down the airports. They're still letting people come in, right? You've got the influx of all this illegal immigration coming in from um, Mexico. The immigration is still in this nation. That's well, it's not, it, but we don't have that problem like the United States because in the United States, you know, within, you know, less than a year, they have over 100,000 people coming through and 66,000 of them are children, unattended children. So we've got some serious issues now with some viruses coming in that could, you know, kill you within a week. And the and, hospital's just like a big bacterial culture. For well, and this is why I'm here because, spread, you, you know, know, it's enough that you're out here having to struggle with you know inadequate housing, inadequate heat, inadequate hydros, and you know inadequate food and food storage, and That's you know not basic wash. Food. We eat like kings. You eat like kings. Would oh, yeah. you say, Paul, that you eat like a king? Yeah, we eat pretty good here. Yeah, I'm and and how there. is it you're eating so good, living in a tent in a field? Oh. There's services, Educate me. <laughs> people, there's the night shift over here. They hand out. They have a truck that comes to the parking lot there at seven every night. Hands out soup and sandwiches and. Pastries yeah. and coffee okay. and whatever. There's a Surrey Urban Mission, they have lunch mm -hmm. every But it still doesn't days. address the housing crises or the healthcare crises. My daughter is an addict. Um, and I know she's falling through the cracks when it comes to the healthcare system. And if she's falling through the cracks, <laughs> I can't really do that, people. Talk with my mm -hmm. mouth chewing away here. But if my daughter is falling through the cracks through the healthcare system, with uh, inadequate um, recovery houses and programs and that type of thing, housing and and maybe you are eating fine through the churches, recovery but it, that's just go. a band-aid solution in my opinion. Uh -huh. Because that food, that do you realize that here's 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 the crises that's pending, and this is why I'm out here because it could happen. Not to say it will happen, but it is possible. It is happening in other countries right now where um, presidents and prime ministers are having to put. Uh, people into uh, court not quarantine. What do they call it? A curfew. Quarantine. Restriction. No curfew. Right. They're they're making it so people can't leave their homes to stop the spread of this uh, illness that they're projecting to have 1.5 million people infected with the Ebola um, Ebola virus by January of 2015. That's like three months away, people. So if we jump up to 1.5 million people with haemorrhagic haemorrhagic fever with an inadequate healthcare system and everybody into their own survival mode, do you honestly think there's going to be any food trucks around to feed you? No. No. So, where are our local, petition, uh, local politicians talking about this stuff? They're not here. 
Where's the PC Liberal government and Christy Clark talking about there is a possible pandemic that could sweep through Canada very, very quick because we're on the cusp of that? And how do you people in the trenches actually feel about that now that you're being educated on the seriousness of it? Now, maybe you are thinking, oh, well, rumor is they've got somebody in Texas that came down with Ebola and he since died, and now they're blaming two nurses of contracting the same disease, but it's already in the hospitals. Disease, take a look at that word. It consists of two parts, a prefix and a root word. What's the root word? Ease. Okay, you said you had lots to say. Here's your opportunity. Whatever you want to talk about, whatever your issues are, minus the food. Um, well, you know, it... Stop being camera and throw your voice. It strikes me as closer. odd as how 65 to 75% of the homeless people are Native Americans and how the media doesn't address this one little bit, you know, just blows right over it. Yeah, somebody must have noticed Come that. Come closer, because he's got a low voice. You know? Um, as for sickness and disease, I'm not concerned about it. You know, it's our fear of it that lets it control us. Okay. Because you are already suffering out here. Um, You've gotten over that. not suffering. Fear. I like living like this. Um, I live like this by choice. I've lived like this for 12 years now. By choice? Yeah. How about you? By choice, Paul? I see nothing in the Not world quite, that no. I want. Mm -hmm. It's a life of no, materialism and debt slavery. Okay. Busting but this is why I wanted Paul's opinion, because die young. is he out here by choice with his tent and his lady with friend? No, lack ideas. of effort. Lack of effort? Yeah. On what part? <laughs> my part. Oh, so you're taking responsibility. You're yeah, actually one of those people out there taking responsibility. I've got a card in my pocket. It's supposed to give me free education because I'm an Indian, half Indian. Uh -huh. And every time I go in there and talk to them about it, it's here, take your course on how to tie rebar or some other stupid trade so you can build a world, a, a country that we're going to sell to everybody else. No, I want four years general studies. You think they'll give me that? No, fuck no. General studies in what? Well, whatever. It's a prerequisite for a lot of... Uh, you know, like law school or medical school or... So they want you to take a vocational course. Four, four years general studies, you take a bit of uh, this, a bit of that. So I how about know. you? You say lack of effort. Where, where is it that you're lacking an effort? My, my time, my consumption, I'm wasting my own time with other things. Yo, well, you know what, though? What Being... would you rather be doing? What would you, <laughs> well, what do you, what would you want to be doing? You need to find a roof, roof and uh, some walls for me and a girlfriend, you know. Well, th this is the thing, yeah. And how long have you been in this wall, position for? Like about a year now. It's, about a year. Yeah. But th that's the thing, though, it compounds. Yes. So you're yes, a man yes. that can pull himself up by his bootstraps, but the problem is you're being kept knocked down because you're, you, you can't get that initial start. St start and. You know, I, I've seen it with my own, I, you know what, I don't suffer from addiction, but it happens to me all the time, yes, and it's yes. very hard yeah, to hang on. Addiction, yes. yes, it's very, you don't, with or without addiction, it's yes. very, very hard to hang on. And once you're out here, and you've been reduced down into the tent, that yeah. you, you know, whatever, here, there, it, I can it's only imagine. It's too easy for yourself, People and all of a sudden you're stuck. Week, you're so stuck. Go to the you're lake on the weekend and pitch a tent and go camping. This is, and this is how I live. It's great. It yeah, but what works for you healthy. isn't working for the other five people out here, right? We're only hearing your story and his story, but there's like, and there was like six that got run out of here. And this is a systemic problem, right? You're aware of the Cedar Gardens that got tore down. 133 suites or something? Yeah. Did wiped it get out. torn down? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It's good because yeah. it was a fucking shithole. Yeah, but how many people got to place? 300? How many? Oh, sure. About 300 people right. got displaced, and do you honestly think that 300 people found shelter? No. No, there's not enough facilities for all the homeless people. Exactly. So there's not enough the home facilities. There, there's the point. There's not but enough facilities for the homeless people. The healthcare system is already out of whack, and it's only going to take one person to start the infection. Where is it going to leave you guys? Because you're the most vulnerable of vulnerable. Your immune systems are worn down. You don't have the adequate shelter and housing to, I don't you know, believe to... so. I don't believe our immune systems are worn down, and it's a lot about belief, you know, it's about faith. It's like, the, you know what a placebo is? Doctor uh -huh. gives you a sugar yeah. pill and tells you it'll cure you, you believe it, so okay. it works. How about you? What's Do that? you believe that it's all about faith and everything is going to work out fine no. when the shit hits the fan? It'd be nice if it did, though. <laughs> okay, so let's just say... Everything's going to work let's out just exactly say, here, Here's a hypothetical question. Yes, that, that I believe. Here's a hypothetical. You're healed. That's good. Here, I need it with my eyes. 
I'm going. I got the coma. So here's a hypothetical question. This is this is to the this is to the root of the matter here. Now you guys are walking the talk. You live out here every day. You deal with the crap every day. If there was an outbreak, if there was an outbreak for God unknown reason of Ebola in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. What would you expect from your local and provincial government in order to protect your personal being? Being that you've already been ignored. I'd expect what do you think the cops are going to do if somebody over there breaks out with Ebola? How do you want to be treated? How would you expect to be treated as a human being, regardless of how poor you are? Well, because they, they've got it doesn't mean I've got it. No, but... Isolating people might not be the worst you know, it sucks, but you know, it's but do you see the, what direction it's going in? It's called an people. outbreak, and what do they do when it comes into an outbreak? They quarantine people. How do you think you're going to be treated? How would you want to uh, be treated? Everyone else, of course. Like everyone else. So, 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 if your neighbor How over here for some reason got sick, for, if your like, neighbor, no, this is serious stuff because Canada is not prepared for this. I'm telling you, the United States, they're bringing in SWAT teams, specific health care SWAT teams, to swarm in on Canada somebody. Is an entity. That, Disease affects individuals. Do you watch? Well, that's the, their job, though, right? What's that? That's their job, is to quarantine. That's what quarantine is all about. Okay. It's, uh, and it's, it's necessary to for the go in and of the take care of the sick and then take, uh, avoid it. Avoid uh, all other contact, right? Yes, right. But you realize it only takes spread, one right? to start the spread, and then once it starts, you know, people's people well, demure. Once, once it gets unquarantined, once, once, it goes, once, it, once it breaches the walls of the quarantine, uh -huh. then you're then you're in trouble. So what if your neighbor breaks out with it right yeah. here in this tent? Yeah. And then what? You got those guys coming in with their hazmat suits saying, "Okay, aren't you not being criminalized enough as it is?" Well, you hope, why would they say that? You, you hope you're oh, in the right hands, sorry. right? That's what, that's what voting's all about, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we have you here, Paul, right? To keep it uh, diplomacy there, you know, and some, you know, know, keep it on the straight and narrow, right? What are the symptoms so this of this should Ebola? Be anyway, so. What are the symptoms? Okay, uh, the person that has it, initially, for when they don't show fever, right, of that kind, like a you know, mild flu symptoms, they're not contagious. But as soon as they start fevering, and you know, getting you know severe flu-like symptoms, throwing up, that kind of stuff. Within within uh, two to eight days, they're dead. And wow. seriously, and it's it's her hemorrhagic fever. No wonder they're swarming. What happens is is the um, brain hemorrhage. Everything they, they bleed from the eyes, the nose, the ears, yeah. the nipples, any or any body orifice. Yeah. And you're throwing up, you and it's spewing, and then you're you know you're having diarrhea, and then your body organs just shut down. And it's the the death rate is 50 to uh, 70 to 70 to 90 percent of people. 70 is 50 to 70 is on the good side, but in some areas up to 90 percent of the people have died from it, right? So it, it's pretty serious. And there, the thing is, now I, I I'm not a fear monger here, people. Okay, well, but somebody are. from New Westminster. No, I'm informing you of what's out there. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to educate I'm you so that you. I'm informing you of your own potential as a human being. That's fair enough. But person. somebody from the United uh, New Westminster, which is just across the bridge, law, right? New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada, just across the bridge, emailed uh, what's his name, Alex Joan from Infowars, and said that they just got back from uh, Liberia or wherever it was, and his wife is sick and she's afraid to go to the hospital because she's afraid that she'll be diagnosed or maybe have Ebola and they don't even want to go there with that. So it could be things. here. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. It could be here. We're just not being told about it. Or, or, or we don't know about it. Do you want to come into the camera and have her do it? You no, know, I'm trying to decide about my lunch, that's all. Oh, uh, okay. Can you continue this while I get my lunch, please? To the point, to the point. Uh, to the point. Just this point, that's it? Yeah, and then show her what part to... Uh, the zoom, zoom's here. Yeah, that's your zoom. So you can just zoom it in between the two okay. of us here. Okay. And if you got an opinion, you're more than welcome to give your opinion. I don't know. No, that's okay. 
So, so you know, th this anyway. is my concern so because I know that you know right now what's die. happening in in, in British Look Columbia, Canada, all across the provinces. If something happens to you and you got to call the ambulance, I don't care how rich, how poor you are, you're obligated to pay eighty dollars right off the hop if they take your butt to the hospital. So. In other words, our provincial government is asking these people out here who have absolutely nothing, if they get sick and they call 911, ambulance picks them up because I know I owe Revenue BC Canada X amount of dollars for when my daughter was off in the ambulance, right? So they're going to charge these people 80 bucks each and every time they go to the hospital. And I also know for a fact that when they get to the hospital, if they are on the fringe of being homeless and that type of thing, the health care that they receive is not equal compared to with somebody with a oh, pension yeah, it's plan. It's definitely a two-tier system. It's definitely a two-tier system. So if we get Ebola coming up in the mix in here, and we're already hearing that it might be a new West minister because they're uh, faxing and emailing Alex Jones from InfoWars. We got our faithful helicopter running around up there with their little Wi-Fi shit listening to what I got to say. It's not. <laughs> oh, I know. But, you know, it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. What has Christy Clark and any of those BC Liberals done to protect the people out here, never mind when they just leave them out here? Right? Listen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's United just going to take one. So, 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 if, 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 if your neighbor breaks out with something, and you know, the... And they to sell native land to all these other cultures? Yeah, but you know what? It's going to come down to the survival of the fittest if this thing gets out of control. If this stuff gets out of control, you know, we, the people, are going to have to learn to work together on this one. So, you know, we may have to quarantine ourselves and just like you're not moving anywhere, right? Because you're yeah. tired of being pushed around, oh, yeah. you know, you're tired of, free, you know, be, being whatever, right? Yeah, we're going right? to turn this into a protest. You're going to turn it into a protest. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going on YouTube and it's being put on uh, the White House channels. <laughs> so there's your, there's your step in the door, people. Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, we don't have a constitution. Obama, what were you thinking when you uh, put up that video? Because you're stirring up BC Canada. Sorry. Seriously. Hey, how are you? You know, God forbid. I mean, the, the point is, I'm doing you're that. already oh, suffering yeah. with about proper health care mm -hmm. by not receiving it. Whether it's adequate housing, you know, support programs, that kind of stuff. When they cleared out uh, Cedar Gardens, before they shut down that place and pushed 300 more people out on the streets, they should have ensured that there was someplace else for them to go. Yeah. And that's why I'm they here, should've. because they didn't. Mm -hmm. When I went there looking for my daughter, because my daughter struggles, struggles with addiction, right? Mm -hmm. They had it all gated off with security. Oh, well, you know, we're just trashing out the garbage. I said, hey, buddy, I said, you know, you better watch who you're talking to here because you're talking about my daughter. You know, where's my daughter? Well, she's not in here. I said, obviously not. You gated it off. But you're feeling pretty proud of yourself pushing everybody out in the streets. And this is where they are. And we've had this problem for a very, very, very long time. Where our local mayor built herself a new town hall mm -hmm. at the cost of $150 million. And they do have a homeless shelter fund, but that money's all on lockdown. And it gets spinned around because I've been to those uh -huh. meetings too. Right, so mm -hmm. when they these professionals come and up and they talk about the of these it, stuff well, when they come up and they talk about oh, don't worry, the healthcare system's going to get a handle on it. You know, I, I I think I think after I leave, I think you guys better start whispering to each other and start figuring out a way to protect yourselves from this shit, because yeah. if you show up at the hospital, you know, and it, it, it and if this stuff does get out in 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 our neck of the woods. That's how I protect myself. I don't go you know, to the hospital. You <laughs> might you might want to consider just kind of quarantining yourself. To not expose yourself to potential danger, and at least educate, start fears. educating. Yes. You know, and start I am educating. Try, I'm trying to educate. And, and, if, and if you've already started your you protest, the water. you know, if you've already feel this is what this is. We tried over there. Huh? We tried over there. We put some signs up, and they just yeah. threw them in the garbage. They ripped them down. Who did? The police. The police. When did this happen? That was about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. How many people were out there? Twenty of us. Twenty of you. Yes. Years ago. Well, that I was there with the Where community garden. Mm -hmm. I was there in 2008 with the community garden. With sledgehammers. I know. I was there. I planted the community garden in 2008, mm -hmm. and then they came in with their little bulldozer and their little crew of volunteers, and they wiped everything out, mm -hmm. and then they laid down the rocks and they spread the chicken shit. I know all that. I got videos addressing all that from oh back in those days. <laughs> Right? I'll give you my website address. And, you know, it's still the same. 
except we've got vulnerable women being hung in trees, Janice Shore, right? You know Janice Shore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is this is her this is her resting ground. Yeah. Right? You know, have they ever found the murderer? No. I don't think so. I don't think so, I don't think so either. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it mm -hmm. yet. But uh, I'm really concerned about this. Uh, they don't care anyways. They no. don't. So, so, so when they talk about, oh, don't worry, the healthcare system will take care of the, mm -hmm. you know, the spread of a pandemic. Yeah, who, who are they going to take care of? Off. That's my question. That's why I'm here, people. Who are they going to take care of? Are they taking care of these people right now? I mean, right off the hop, if you call 911, you as a poor person that has absolutely zero dollars is required to pay $80 just to get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. wow. Right? That's so right. they're criminalizing you on an economical level before they even help you to get better. Right? And of course, you know, there's a disproportionate, um, you know, ratio in terms of, you know, who's more disenfranchised than others. And, and unfortunately, up in this neck of the woods, it, it tends to be uh, First Nation people. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, n now you're aware a little bit of uh, Ebola. Mm -hmm. and you're aware that it's coming in on the airplanes, and that our really? politicians. Well, that's that's how it's getting here. It's coming mm -hmm. in on people. They're saying they're screening. They're doing all this stuff. You know, they're screening them there before they get on the on the plane. There's, you know, some airports. The federal government in Canada just recently approved funding to only screen people coming in off of flights from, you know, West Africa uh, for temperature, mm -hmm. only six airports out of all of Canada. Does that mean ours is being screened? I don't know. Have you heard anything about it in the news? Newspapers, no. on the streets, nothing. Everybody's nothing. quiet out here. Obama, on the other hand, almost every day he's up there having to address this because, you know, there's 300 and 20 million people in the United States, and mm -hmm. if this thing starts to go, it's going to start going. Yeah. And right now, it just seems to be, so they say, healthcare workers coming into contact with the Ebola virus that have now testing positive, two of them, that came into contact with an individual that was sent home and then went back after with a homeless person being in the ambulance after they dropped him off and he since died. Wouldn't you be worried? Oh, yes. Where is that homeless person right now? That's my question after they released him because he was in the ambulance right after that guy that had it and died where is he wow. and if it in, in my opinion and if it, one homeless person gets it under these kind of living conditions multiply that over a nation in terms of a continent united states of america and canada that's a big fucking continent with a lot of homeless population mm -hmm. And if it gets into and if it gets into this money, group, or would you rather leave your children a healthy planet to live on? If it gets into this group and starts to spread, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to be treated with dignity? Do you think you're going to get quality health care? So there you go. That's the point of this. So. When, 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 these, when these politicians, I don't care if it's the President of the United States of America, Obama, I told him, you need to stop and think about it. What if a junkie gets it? My daughter's a junkie. I'm not afraid, I'm not, I'm not afraid or embarrassed to say that because my daughter is struggling, okay, and she's suffering. And, I, and I'm looking to the healthcare system in Canada to help her and I'm still waiting. You'll give me my channel, you go back into my videos, you'll, you'll, you'll hear the story, right? But what if she gets it? Yeah. What if she gets it because she happened to be standing in a grocery store next to some guy that came off a freaking airplane? Huh? Mm -hmm. And then she comes back to her community that basically has nothing yeah. except maybe a food truck that feeds them well. But what if it starts here? How, is, how are these healthcare professionals going to deal with that problem when they can't even deal with what they got right now? Because they don't want to, right? Because mm -hmm. it's all politics. Yeah. Huh? They're going to do their jobs and they're going to make money off the suffering of the downtrodden. No, what the they'll do is they'll quarantine. Been, homelessness has been a problem of society for 2,000 years, man. It's so what's your problem. solution? Get out here and say you're at peace because it's almost over now. I well, said my peace. is to accept it. Huh? Everybody should be homeless. These fucking, this society is destroying the planet and that's what creates this unhealthy. I think you've been homeless too long, buddy. 
I do. I think I think it's just gotten to you, and you've just I'm accepted. I'm 40 years you. old, and look at me. I look like I'm fucking 26, man. No, 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 no. I'm fucking I think, healthy. I'm I think I think young, what's I'm happened strong. here is you accepted your fate, and versus you know letting it eat you up inside, you're just learning trying to cope with it the best that you can. We're all because doing that. Most people immerse themselves in a culture of materialism and excess. Uh -huh. You know, I do some drugs and I meditate and I ride my bike and you know I have. Yes, but the best of even what addicts I want can be functioning. That's what we need to bring people up to is just a functional don't level. Whether us. whether you're an addict or whether you're not an addict, is what we need to do is bring people up to a functioning level. This is not functioning. This is yes, functioning yes, to what you have, but you. this is not the ones that no are supposed to be, to be representing us, providing that functionality so that we can better improve ourselves. And if anything, they're putting us at risk now because we already know that when we get to the hospital, chances are, you know, there's a million people in the hospital just laying up in these beds when you get there. What's that? You're not normal unless you got a nine to five and a mortgage and two point three kids. No, no, no. By the age yeah, I know that. 40. I know that. So anyway, um, I'm, I'll give you my number, and the next time you have a little protest, you just call me up, and I'll, I'll come mm -hmm. with my ass. No, you can go away and stay away. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way You just want to talk. You know? Talk. You don't want to hear anything. Well, come here. You just want to. No, you come. Well, you're telling everybody to go homeless. What's your okay? I won't cut you off. I'm gonna have a, a cigarette. A to no, you, I'm gonna have a cigarette. Native Americans yeah. were homeless. Come sit down right? so they can hear we you. We lived in tents. We lived in teepees. We were healthy. We were happy. We were strong. Else, we got a beautiful people. culture that lived in harmony with the land. Okay, and and now this culture is taking over and it's destroying the world, and that's what creates all this disease and unhealthiness. Okay. And, you know, the Mayans figured it out. They were they left the cities. Henry David Thoreau figured it out, and wildness is the preservation of the world. People, would you rather leave your children money, or would you rather leave your children a healthy, happy planet to live on? Me, I'd rather leave my children a healthy planet Okay, to but live how on. does that address the here and now, right now, with the safety of these people and what's potentially out in our community, without you being told about it? That's the question. Now that you're being told not, about it, what are we going to do about, about it? Is it not a cause? Not, Common knowledge? Is it not in the media? Is it on the papers and on TV? Yeah, in the United States. I don't know. Because the I've people are calling them out, not out here. Do you hear anything? I haven't heard anything. We get the same news they do. Do we not? We don't get the same action. We're 33 million, 36 million compared Our to the Our news is all edited anyway, but that's, uh, different, uh, that's a different story altogether. Um, it's, always, it's a new disease every fucking five years. First it's hepatitis, then it's AIDS, then it's this, then it's that, you know? They created all these fucking diseases, probably, and they've got the cure, and you've got the cure, too. It's right here in your fucking heart. Okay. You, too, and you, too. Fucking don't forget it, man. Okay, so, do you have any mo anything know. to say? You, what, I, now that I, you're, I, now I, that I, you're I, aware you of what I came to you with information, tech, what is your initial can you go? thoughts? I'm just in shock, that's about You're it. You're in shock. Yeah. On your bike, lad. Because nobody, nobody's informed you what's out Come there. Come on. No, nobody. Alright. Right? right? Hmm. But now that you're aware... Fucking move on, mm -hmm. man. Fuck. But now that you're aware, what you gonna do? I got no clue She's what not I'm aware. Do. She's not programmed by the bullshit you're trying to feed us. Shut the hell up. Beat it. Get All the right. fuck out of here. Okay. All right. Do you want my web address? No. Okay, I'll give it to you, and if you he wants suck. it later, you give it to him. Okay. Okay, come on. <laughs> Go get some fucking disease. And no. Fucking quit spreading your fucking <laughs> Huh? Oh, push the button. So as you can see, just the camp. All right.